Talking pictures had already arrived in America, but with the huge costs involved, Europe was holding back. Some of the finest German silence would be made in the next two years. Mountain films had become immensely popular. Shot on location, they were a breath of fresh air after the claustrophobia of the studio pictures. The star of most of these films was Leni Riefenstahl. The white hell of Pitz Palou was made on location in the Engadine. The actors had to do their own stunts and sometimes paid the price, as here, with a vicious crack on the head. Trapped high on a mountain, the girl's husband is badly injured. The company worked on the Mortarach Glacier, with temperatures often 30 degrees below freezing. The mountain films had been pioneered by Dr. Arnold Funk, with whom Leni Riefenstahl had been working for some years. Funk was persuaded by Riefenstahl to work with G.W. Pabst because she felt the film needed more human emotion. A climber who has accompanied the couple sacrifices himself for the girl's husband. Riefenstahl responded to Pabst's direction but felt that Funk took unnecessary risks. Und denken Sie, stellen Sie, stellt euch vor, ich bin ungefähr fünf Meter hochgezogen, hat doch der Fang, ich muss sagen, dieser Kerl, damals war ich wütend auf ihn, durch eine vorbereitete Sprengung mit Dynamit eine ganze Eislawine auf mich runterstürzen lassen. Ich bin fast verrückt geworden, denn der Staub ging mir in die Nase, in die Ohren rein. Und nicht nur das, die haben... Ich habe geschrien, aufhören, aufhören, ich halte das nicht mehr aus. Und dann haben die aber darauf gar nicht gehört. Die haben mich einfach weitergezogen bis zur Kante und über die Eiskante, sodass ich also mindestens zwei Wochen blau und grüne Flecke am Körper hatte. Ich hätte ihn damals umbringen können, Frank, so wütend war ich. Aber das hat er mit uns allen so gemacht. Funk's mastery of the technique of the mountain film has seldom been excelled. The film was a tremendous international success and a triumph too for Riefenstahl, who thanks to Pabst emerged a bigger star than ever. Pabst had a knack of making stars. To play the role of Lulu, which Asta Nielsen had performed five years before, he had brought Louise Brooks from America. Pabst, who came from the theatre, was the best director of actors Louise Brooks had ever met. But what I'm getting at is that he treated everyone completely differently. Now with Corton, the great actor from the theatre, he would take him aside and in that careful, precise way, they would talk over everything. Now that didn't really mean anything, because Pabst never wanted a set performance. He wanted it to be new and living. Pabst was reversing a trend. Instead of creating a German star only to lose her to Hollywood, he took an American actress and made her a star. Pabst saw in Louise Brooks an erotic quality which Hollywood had barely exploited. Sex was a theme that in American and English films could only be treated very superficially. But the German films in those days started talk, beginning to treat sex themes at a much deeper level. 
The camera work was uh, extraordinarily non-realistic and basically enormously sensual. In ten years, the German cinema had created and discarded style after style, experimenting and improving until it was hard to believe that better films could be made. G.W. Pabst emerged from this decade as perhaps the greatest of all German directors. A man sensitive to technique and design, but who put human beings before it all. This scene from one of his last silence achieves what so many silent filmmakers have been aiming for, to express several ideas at once with pictures and music and no words. Mm. 